Hello, this is Sandra Osterbaris bringing you a few words of Bible from the heart of biblical Israel. This week's Torah portion is Shlach, and in this week's Torah portion, we are going to delve into the sin of the spies, uh, the fact that 12 people, representative princes indeed, of each tribe, are going to go into the land of Israel to check it out, to come back with a report, and instead of bringing back a glowing report, 10 of the spies bring out a t bring back a report that instills fear and anxiety in the nation coming to and enabling them or encouraging them even to come to the conclusion we cannot enter this land and there are only two people that remain faithful to god and remain faithful to their mission and that is caleb and joshua um, unfortunately, as a result of this terrible sin, the nation of Israel is punished. This generation will end up dying in the wilderness and only their children, uh, 38 years later, will be able to enter the land of Israel. I'd like to focus my remarks today on just a few verses, actually um, one verse in particular, chapter 13, verse 22. Here, the scripture is giving us a brief description of some of the places where the spies visited, and we read as follows. And here, I am going to first read the translation uh, that is the common translation, and then I will point out the problems in that translation. Okay? They went up into the Negev, and they came to Hebron, where lived Achiman, Shishai, Talmai, uh, the, the children of the great giant. Now Hebron had been founded seven years before Tzoan of Egypt. Okay? They come to Hebron. We learn that they go up into the Negev, but actually in the Hebrew, we have a switch. In the verb, they go up to the Negev, it is written in the plural form. They go up to the Negev. But when we talk about coming to Hebron, the verb changes. And instead of saying, they go up to Hebron, it says, and he goes up to Hebron. Now, this is something that typically none of the translations picked up. And it could be they didn't pick it up because they figured, well, this is going to be unclear if we say, and they went up to the Negev and he went up to Hebron. The immediate question, what happened? What do you mean? He. Who's he? It was they. It was 12 spies. How can you suddenly talk about only one? Well, indeed, it was only one. And that is a question that's really begged to be asked. How could it be that all 12 went to the Negev and yet only one went to Hebron. What is the significance of that? And our sages, of course, um, do discuss this and give a wonderful, wonderful uh, explanation. But actually, the explanation is obvious to us. What our commentaries have just done is gone a little further, read a little further in the Bible, and we're able then to solve this mystery. So let's jump ahead to the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, we read in chapter 14, this is at the very end of they have finished the wars of conquest the land or most of the land at least has been conquered and they are in the process of dividing up the land to the different tribes and then we have this lovely little story chapter 14 joshua chapter 14 verse 6. the the people of judah approached joshua at gilgal and they said to him caleb the son of yephuneh the kenizite said to him Okay, in other words, the whole nation of, of um, uh, the whole tribe of Judah, or the elders of Judah come to Moses, but actually it's Caleb who is making a claim right now. You know the, what, what the, the instructions that the Lord gave to Moses, the man of God, about me and about you in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of God, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I came back with the word that was in my heart. And my brothers who went up with me uh, took the heart out of the people, swayed the people against the and I was loyal. I filled God's expectation. I was loyal to the Lord uh, our God. And now here's the significant point. On that day, Moses swore as follows. And now he quotes Moses. The land on which your foot trod, 
shall be a portion for you and your descendants forever because you were loyal to the Lord my God. Okay, and now Caleb is going uh, together with the elders of his tribe, going to Joshua to demand fulfillment of this promise. They have now conquered the whole area. Caleb is coming and he's saying, remember Moses promised me the place where my foot trod, I would get. Now you're asking yourselves, where is that? What is he asking for? Okay, and he continues with his story and he goes on. Uh, to, uh, verse 12, so now assign to me this hill country as the Lord promised on that day. Though you too heard on that day that the Anakites, the sons of the Anak of the great giants were there and great fortified cities. If the only the Lord is with me, I will dispossess them as the Lord promised. Okay, he's talking about a city where the children of the Anak are. Where is that? Okay, where is that? Now let's go back for a second to what we just read. In, in, uh, in our Torah portion, okay, we read uh, in this verse that we were talking about, oh, excuse me, I lost my place, here we go, and they went up in the Negev, and he came to Hebron, and there were, Achiman, Sheshai, Tamai, Lidei, Ha'ana. there were these, these uh, people who were the descendants, the children of the Anak, of the giant, Hebron is the place of the giants. And so here, even though we don't yet know the name, when he talks about this hill country and he mentions the giants, we can be fairly confident he's talking about Hebron. But let's go on to the next uh, verse in verse 13. So Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Yephunneh, and gave Hebron to him as his territory. And therefore, thus Hebron became the portion of Caleb, son of Ephraim, the Kenes, as it still is, because he was loyal to the Lord, the God of Israel. Okay, what happened? What we learn from here is that Caleb is saying, Joshua, Moses promised me the place where I was. Where was that place? Hebron. Let's go back to our verse here. They went up to the Negev, but only Caleb went to Hebron. Now, why did Caleb go to Hebron? And here's where our accommodators bring in a lovely midrash that has such wonderful meaning to it, okay? He says he went to Hebron to pray at the tomb of the patriarchs, to pay to God at the tomb of the patriarchs for strength and success in their mission, okay? Now, what is the significance of pay, praying at the tomb of the patriarchs? Who are the patriarchs? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their wives. Why are they so significant? Because they are the ones that God first promised the land to. I will give this land to your children. And here is Caleb taking part in a mission that is the front, front, uh, you know, the first, um, the first leg of the the mission to conquer the land of Israel. Here, Caleb is now at a point where he is in that generation where God's promise, promise to the forefathers, will be fulfilled. So he's going to the tomb of the patriarchs as if to say God remember your promise to these people to the people who are buried here to Abraham Isaac and Jacob I am here to fulfill my part I'm going to do my best to make it possible for us to conquer this land to make it possible for the nation of Israel to believe and to go with 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 heads high and and conquer this land believing and knowing that you are with them but i ask you god to you do your part to give us strength and to give me strength here in this mission and i think that is so significant in an understanding first of all it tells us perhaps Caleb already understood that the other 10 guys on this mission weren't going to be so easy. And so he was going to need extra strength, not just to conquer the land, but into his current mission to bring back a good word about the land of Israel. And the fact that this is the place that he ended up getting, he, Caleb, more than anyone was devoted and loyal to the promise of God. It's going all the way back to our forefathers. He's the one who belonged in the city of Hebron, the city of our forefathers. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoyed that video and we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell and that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Video. And we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click 
on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell. And that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.